more than a full-time job um, or close to a full-time job of, with the number of leads that you have right now? It sounds like somebody pretty much five hours a day, would you say? A lot of them are coming in after hours. They're coming in on the weekends. That That's a whole different parameter. If we want to stay on top of it, we want to hit those leads where they're hot. It can't necessarily be an a eight to five, a nine to five position. Do you have the bandwidth? What does your schedule look like? There's nothing like a lead coming in, they're hot and ready and you want to get them scheduled and there's no room in the schedule. Welcome to another episode of Full Arch Advantage podcast. My name is Gary Bird, and I'm your host. I'm also the CEO of SMC National, where we provide predictable new patient flow for offices just like yours. And today, I have the privilege of speaking with Wendy. She is the operational manager of Smile Rehab Centers, and we're going to be going over a lot of stuff that you're going to find very, very interesting. She's sharing her transition between marketing companies and what kind of experience she's had with that. Also having to figure out how to make sure that her operational structure is there to support the marketing efforts that she has. And then also she explains how she moved from a pre-COVID market to a post-COVID market because those are two totally different things now and it's taking a totally different approach. You're going to want to make sure you stay tuned for this one. All right, Wendy. So why don't you tell us how many new patient consults you're getting every single month? Currently, we're um, averaging between 25 to 30 new patients a month. Okay, awesome. And how, those are all full arch, or do you have like a different a mix of different kinds of patients? It is a mix. A little bit of, um, about our center. We do focus on full arch, but we want it to be a bridge between um, the, the big DSOs and different companies out there where people walk in for that full arch, and if they can't get a full arch, then there's no hope. So we do have a mix. We offer full mouth reconstruction, whether it's traditional uh, crown and bridge, whether it's over denture, whether it's a denture, or whether it's fixed arch. So our whole um, goal behind setting up the practice was we wanted to bring resolution and to all patients, not just. So trying to help a bigger um, income uh, group of people, right? Because not everybody can afford full arch and be able to get that kind of treatment done. Sorry to disrupt the show, but I got something crazy to share with you. We are attempting to connect with all of our listeners. We have thousands of people that listen to this podcast, and we want to meet you in person. We have four events coming up, and I want to give you a discount code that you can use for the next week to save $300 off your ticket. The discount code is Gary Bird, and the link is going to be just down below. You can also go to smcnational.com forward slash events. I hope to connect with you in person and help each other grow our businesses. Can't wait to see you soon. Exactly. So we definitely have a a mixture of people. Awesome. And then so out of those 30 consults or so a month, how many of those are turning into new patients uh, that are actually starting? Um, Actually, that 30 is actually starting to yield about about half. So we're, we're doing about 15 to 16 now. Um, whether it's just a simple part of their um, full treatment or if someone is actually signing up for the full arch. Got it. So some some out of the 30 p- new people that are coming in, about half of them are saying yes to some kind of treatment. Yes. That's great. And then where where would you say the 30 consults are coming from? Where, where are you seeing these people from? Are they coming so, from doctor referrals, patient referrals, marketing, a mix? It is a mix. Um, again, being a, a new center focusing on full arch, being a prosthodontist, especially center. Um, before the pandemic, of course, we relied heavy in the specialty field on our referrals from the doctor. Yeah. Post pandemic, that's changed. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of doctors are super GPs. They're doing implants. They're doing things in office to to recapture that production that they missed on the pandemic. So we had to focus on marketing, focus on the direct to consumer marketing. And that right now is where we're getting the bulk of our leads. Got it. So most are coming from um, consultation. Most of the consultations, 30 consultations are coming from marketing. So what kind of marketing are you focusing on specifically? So specifically, we have, um, we started off grassroots. So new company, no patients in the door. So what are we going to do with that time? We did go out and do the the bonding with our local doctors, you know, got the doctor out to meet, deliver our message. But then we started to focus on um, our 
Google? Um, mm-hmm. Are we going to do Google ads? We're, are we going to do Facebook, social media? So we kind of did a mix of things um, for the last year and a half to, to get the data to see exactly where we'd be pulling our patients from. Um, for us, the mix turned out that we were getting more leads from Facebook. However, we're getting more quality leads from Google, those people that are really ready to move forward. So being able to actually throw the net out there and see what was going to come in and then taking the time to dive into that data that we had to figure out where ah, we're getting it and where we need to put our, our money. Got it. So when you say Google, so the quality leads seem to be coming from Google for you guys. Is that just running directly Google ads or are you uh, more are you more uh, retargeting people that maybe you found on Facebook and then back on Google? It basically coming from, um, it's a mixture of Google ads, also pulling people that may have um, reached out through Facebook. Um, mm. We also threw in a little geofencing there too um, mm-hmm. to capture some things. But uh, mainly what I found is that anything that was coming from my Google ads were um, people that were actually truly searching for yeah. the services that we were uh, providing and had, you know, done their research and they were ready to come in and mm-hmm. really um, hear what we had to say um, and move forward with treatment. That's interesting because usually what we see is a lot of people, you can get a lot of leads from Google, but a lot of times the Google le- y- y- that's the problem is that you get too many leads, right? So you have a lot of researchers. So there's always a lot of people researching about dental implants. Do you guys get a lot of leads that don't end up turning into patients? Like how many to get those 30 consults, how many leads are you getting on a monthly basis? We do um, basically. And again, I tell anybody that's starting off, no matter where you start, dig into the the data that you're getting. I found out that the bulk of our leads were coming from our Facebook ads. Mm hmm. Um, so, and, but we weren't getting, um, great turnaround from that. So we're getting a lot of exposure, Yeah. but again, those are the people that are, are scrolling and clicking and Hey, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. So we're getting tons and tons of lead. I mean, out of the 30 that, um, we were seeing, uh, probably 80% of those were coming in with Facebook, um, mm. or social media, which meant it took a, a little more work, a little more a time. More, yeah. Um, because you're going to have to touch those multiple times before you can even get them on the schedule. And if you get them on the schedule because they, you know, were late night scrolling, the chances of those people coming in um, were, were smaller. Hmm. But we did have to look at it. Was it worth the investment? Yes, the exposure is always worth the investment. Ah, Our branding is getting out there. The name is getting out there. So. Yeah, because they're um, eventually, they're in the funnel. They're, it's not like they're not yes. interested in buying. It's just that it might not be low enough in the funnel for you guys yet. Exactly. They're just yep. starting their process. It was more of a thought or I thought about it and let me think a little bit more about it. So, um, but when I looked, like I said before, when I looked at the um, ads, that the Google ads that were coming in, the leads from there were a little f- further down in the funnel. They'd already mm. you know, seen the Facebook. They'd already maybe heard about the procedure they wanted. So um, the touches with those guys were a little less and a lot more productive. Do you know approximately how many leads you're seeing a month to get those 30 consults? To get those 30 consults, um, oh my gosh, let That's me think lot, about probably. this month. We're probably um, February 130. Yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so about a 20, 20 percent conversion yes. from the number of leads. <laughs> and then and then so what we've seen for about every five thousand dollars of marketing spend that someone invests into any kind of marketing for full arch, you're going to spend about an hour or two a day following up with those leads. And we call it lead nurturing. But, you know, it's just yes. follow up and massaging those leads. in. do you have somebody that helps you with that internally? Yes. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that we had, and like I kind of shared with you earlier, we started with um, one company and, and we weren't seeing the turnaround that we wanted. Um, and I, my advice to a lot of people, if you're starting out, start somewhere. You, you've yeah. got to market it. it yeah. You have to market. Um, but if you're not getting the turnaround that you need, you know. What do you mean in. by turnaround? Like just just not getting so the we weren't getting the leads in. Oh, okay. um, at first, it, it was okay. It was trickling in. We were new. It, you know, it, we were happy to see anybody come through the door. But as I start looking at 
the data and what we were spending, what was coming in, um, I had to make you know some decisions. Um, it got to the point where I felt I was leading the marketing team that I was paying. You know, if I'm having to give the suggestion, were they dental, I, were they dental specific or were they non? They were dental specific, which is why uh, you know I made the decision um, because they were dental uh, specific, and you know our market is is different. Hmm. Um, but when I started to look in and ask, hey, you know, you're doing my SEO. What are the keywords? Can I see the keywords? What are we using? These are not producing. Can we, um, it it made me realize, okay, we need to probably go a step further. Um, Mm. But before doing that, you know, I had to sit down and look at our operations. You know, if we Mm. do this. Make sure that you're answering the phones, make sure somebody's available. Exactly. It it doesn't matter if you get, it doesn't matter if you have the best marketing company in the world. If you don't answer the phones, and nothing really matters, right? Right, and having the bandwidth, like you said, if you've got to, if we've got to touch these people, we got to answer the phone calls, but you've got to follow up. Do we have the bandwidth? You know, get let's get these things in place before these calls come in. So to answer your question, yes, we definitely have. Um, you know, making sure that we have the phones covered, making sure that we have time available to touch these leads as they're coming in, so that that has to be solid before. You know, before you start getting the leads in, because th- then what happened? You, you yeah. spent great money. The leads came in, but our system was broke and you yeah, can't do nothing. anything with it. Yeah, you don't go anywhere. So then and then you can also control a lot more of the operational side, too, which makes it a much easier fix than trying to increase marketing to start. So I, I totally agree with you on that. So of those 130 leads that you're getting a month, roughly how much were you having to spend to generate those? Um, average, we're looking, my budget, I want to always be a hundred, a hundred dollars or less per lead, um, right now for what we're doing and we're okay. coming right in at that. So awesome. And then, and then do you, did you track, do you track cost per start as well? Yes, we do. What, what, what's your cost per start? I knew you were going to ask me that when I didn't look, <laughs> <laughs> look, have all these notes here. <laughs> You're good. But uh, I, I don't no, have that don't. in front of me. Yeah. Okay, no worries. That's totally fine. I was just curious. Yeah. And then, okay, so then from from there, so you're spending about $100 to make the phone ring, and then about 20% of those are coming in, and then um, and then about half of those are closing. Um, so so then, so we could, we could probably reverse engineer the cost per start, but not, it would take me some time to add it all up. <laughs> but um, but then from there, how, who's doing the lead nurturing for you? Is that somebody internally or is that somebody e- external helping you guys with that? Um, right now, it's internally. Um, we, we like the control, um, like knowing that the message, everything is on brand for what we say and what we do. But as we're growing and we're seeing the growth, that, that is an area that operationally um, I'm looking at how, how do we want to handle that going forward? Do we want to bring in someone external to just handle that piece? Do I want to increase my staffing here? So it's it's one of the things that I'm that I'm planning out right now. That's awesome. Okay, and I know that's a big chunk, right? Because it's <laughs> it's more than more than a full time job um, or close to a full time job of with the number of leads that you have right now. It sounds like somebody pretty much five hours a day. Would you say minimum? And with that, looking at one of the things I like to look at is when the, when are those leads coming in? Um, a lot of them are coming in after hours. They're coming in on the weekends. That that's a whole different parameter. If we want to stay on top of it, we want to hit those leads where they're hot. Then um, how do we capture that? How do we do that? It can't necessarily be a, a eight to five, a nine to five position. Mm. Um, if I want to really capture, so it'll probably people. be somebody who's working remote more than likely. Then more than likely. Yeah. Okay, good. And the reason I bring this up, I know this is kind of old hat for you because you've done it and you've been doing it. But for a lot of people, as they venture into full arch or they start to think about doing full arch, this is something you really have to consider. If you're just like, yeah, I'm going to hire a marketing company and drive all these leads. You ha- <laughs> it's not that simple. Like there's a lot more, there's a lot more complications to it. Um, and, or if you're a doctor who's worked all off of referrals. So I've talked to a lot of doctors who work a hundred percent off of referrals and then they try to add marketing and they're like, wait a second, this is a different beast. Like I'm not used to seeing this many leads and then having to sort through those. Right. And even with that, if you're not used to seeing that many, are you, do you have the bandwidth? What does your schedule look like? There's nothing like, 
a lead coming in, they're hot and ready and you want to get them scheduled and there's no room in the schedule. You, you didn't think that far ahead. Yeah. You did not plan out what what this looks like. So for me, a lot of times what I look at is if, if I'm going to get X amount of leads, how many phone calls is that? How many appointments do I need? Where do we put these people on the schedule? How do we build out the schedule mm. going forward so that we can accommodate the growth that we want? Yeah. And a lot of times I've seen uh, doctors or practices get stuck because now you've got all these calls coming in, but you have nowhere to put them. So you're literally wasting your money. Yeah. But when you go back and look at it, the first thing that I, a lot of times I would hear is marketing doesn't work or mm, yeah. I'm not getting it. And, and and you look at the numbers and I'm like, well, they're coming in. What's happening? What's broken? Where, where is it where, broken? Yeah. Where, where is it? I see the, the water coming in the door, but nothing's catching it. You know, yeah. it's just running. Yeah. So um, and a lot of really, times people don't look at that because to high, to increase bandwidth to open up your schedules cost a lot of money. So marketing's actually way cheaper. So it's way cheaper to say, "Hey, we're going to hire this outside firm. We're going to pay him ten thousand dollars a month," than it is to hire two more full time people. Maybe someone for the front desk, and then someone to work in the back with you, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to train your uh, your treatment coordinator in a different way. Like that's a lot of infrastructure cost, labor cost that people don't realize that a lot of times you're going to have to do something like that if you want to increase your bandwidth. Right. And a lot of times the way I tell people to look at it is, okay, it's so easy. Like I said, people figure out, oh, I'm going to spend $10,000 in marketing. So that is not my marketing budget. I need to look at everything else. What is that labor cost? What, yeah. what other things do I have to do? What does training look like? All of that is my marketing budget. Because you cannot do one without the other. Yeah, and totally true. To succeed, so. Yeah, because if you, that's a really good point. Because if you hire all those people and your marketing's not right, then you're going to have to lay them off in a couple of months, which nobody right. wants to do that, right? That's not fun. And then on the flip side, if you hire the marketing and you don't have the labor right, you've then wasted. you've wasted <laughs> your marketing budget, right? So right. It's, it, it's not a chicken and an egg. It's like you got to have both of them. Yes, it's, it's seamless. It, it, the two together, I told my people, the two together forms that bowl, that cup. Yeah. You can't catch. You, <laughs> yeah. You've got you've to gotta be able to catch. And if you're doing one and you're not focusing on the other, you're, you're going to spin your wheels. You're going to feel like marketing doesn't work. You're going to, you know, you're going to dig into all those old excuses. Yeah, I, I follow. I totally agree with you. And then so changing gears on you just a little bit more tactical question. Do you guys use a CRM to track your leads or how do you guys kind of manage those, the, the band, <laughs> all the leads coming in? So it, it's so funny. I, you know, I've been doing it for 30 plus years. So spreadsheet, CRM, I mean, practice uh, management software. So basically, um, I do use um, a cloud base. I use CareStat, which is how we met. So yeah. I track referrals there. Um, I also um, use Salesforce as well. So we're, we're comparing the data. We're, we're looking to see exactly where those where those leads are coming from in, in real time. I need to be able to look at any time of the month or end of the month as we're discussing things to say, hey, this was a great month for, you know, our, our, our Facebook. This was a great month for our Google. What, what were those ads that we were running? Because I, I like to to know, you know, this one worked really well for us. Let's, you know, don't change it. Let's, you know, yeah, let's work on it. Or, um, I had, you know, I have five doctors that referred this month that never referred before. We need to get mm, on that. We need to, yeah. well, we need to, you can't just throw it out there and not dig back in. And a lot of times people wait and they're not making real time decisions. So like I said, we're, we're looking at it all, whether it's in, in Salesforce or whether it's in um, CareStack or both or spreadsheets. I mean, I have a little bit of everything. A little bit because, of everything. Yeah. I, I, I need to see everything in every possible way. Got it. Awesome. And then do you, um, you said that you said that like certain ads work better than others. Is there any that you've seen that like work really well for you guys in your area? Any kind of messaging? Are you leading with price? Are you leading with appointment time? Are you leading with doctor video? Like that kind of stuff. Basically leading with, um, information. Um, uh, we've started to add some, um, well with our, we're redoing our website as well. Um, to have more videos and, and things of that nature for Facebook, quick, fast, simple, straight to the point. But, you know, allowing them to be able to ask more questions or complete a, a survey or something like that so that we can get a little more information. 
Got it. Okay. Awesome. And then, um, and then you said that you're really interested in, uh, robotics and just automating your workflow is, is that something that you can kind of touch on or digital, your digital workflow? How, what, what, it, tell me a little bit about that. So the robotics for us, and it is one of the things we highlight in, in a lot of our marketing, we do, um, place implants robotically. Hmm. So it's the clinical, um, being able to let patients know that it is precise, it's predictable, the outcome, the healing is better. Um, and then in cases where I've had patients come in that was told that, hey, we can't, you can't have an implant. That's just not enough bone. Well, if you're freehanding it, it may not be. But because we're using the robot, there are some instances where we can get that implant placed and offer um um, services that they wouldn't get anywhere else. So we're really focusing on that. We are, as far as clinically, we're digital workflow. Um, so from from the consult CBT, uh, CBCT scan all the way through to photogrammetry, we in, in the robots. So our systems clinically are um, digitally, so everything is efficient and predictable. That's awesome. And is there, let me ask you a final question. So this has been, this has been really good, really, really insightful and helpful for those that are going to be listening and learning how to either start adding more full arches or people who are already doing it and just looking to get better. And your insights have been really helpful. Uh, this last question, I want to know if you were sitting in a stadium and this stadium's full of all the people who, I know you're an ops manager, but all you, you manage the marketing as well. So you're all the ops managers that manage their own marketing are sitting in this stadium and you have one message to share with them. What would that be? That message would be to really dig in, look at your marketing, decide if this is something that internally you should be handling or should you be partnering with someone that can do it better and give mm. you the best results. A lot of times we feel like we can do it. We can, you know, I can read up on the internet at night and I got this, but it is worth the investment. You know, you have to look at it as an investment. You can only take it as far as you know, give it to the experts, but hold them accountable. Yeah, that's really good. Well, it's been really good talking with you today. Thank you so much for coming on, Wendy. Thank you for having me.